Um, I, I, I have a pre pre prepared a, a map and can, can mark it for you and uh, that, will, that will direct you to the spot. If, if, if you pl uh, would pl uh, also please recover any, any um, books, uh, scroll, scrolls perhaps, lost, lost knowledge, I should pay you, pay you handsomely for, for each one too. So aside from the, uh, the books that we may perhaps find, are we to explore this tower? What is, what is the overall purpose? Do you wish purely for us to mark the tower on the maps or? Um, mark, mark the tower be, um, the, uh, we, 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 we don't need, um, un, un, unchecked, checked, um, up, up powers in, in, in the veil. This life's, life's hard enough as it is. Walza so, uh, sits back and crosses his arms and he closes his eye and thinks for a second. He's like, Can we expect any, uh, any resistance? He, he like, looks at Vidoro and he, like, he, like, you know, raises his eyebrow and he's like, eh? And he's like, uh, any resistance at the tower? And he, like, looks back at, uh, at Boswell. Uh, Boswell kind of steeples his hands and he says, I, I, have 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 no no in, in indication of any any such um, pr uh, pr uh, problems. I, I like visibly look dejected a little bit and I'm like. Uh, okay. Um, this, so you this, mentioned this, a uh, you mentioned a guard. It, yes. Uh, Jess, why, Jessica. I must ask why why have you uh, you've gone so far to to pull us from Bitcove. Why Why Bitcove, and why not simply have Jessic go well, on this errand? Well, you know that Boswell actually sent this message to all the cities. Oh, okay. okay. And, and, and Walzer just happened to reply the quickest. Oh, okay. So then, I, but I ask, why not have uh, Jessic be the one to? Um, M M M M M Murray is on a very uh, tight schedule as, as, as it is and he, he, he only has the the two two guards and um, I, I didn't didn't want to bother him it, 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 it didn't seem of uh, par par particular significance and I just um, I uh, did, didn't want to, to keep him uh, the the veil needs its its trade in order to function uh, I like um, uh, I like leaning like what, what about uh, Jonathan out there? He looked well equipped. Oh, he he is, but as as you as you've noticed, we are uh, situated rather re remote re remotely out out here, and and me nor 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 Byron are any are much 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 for it for a fight. And the uh, every so often the the orc, or, orcs will get uh, frisky and and uh, get get too close, and so. Just, John is is quite adept at, at dealing with that. The uh, as well as our, our night, night guardsman who is uh, at the time uh, asleep up, upstairs, uh, uh, Charles, and um, and so I I'm afraid afraid I can't actually um, uh, spare spare them at this time. Mm, makes sense. Oh, I see. So should we should we succeed, properly map your your tower for you? Uh, what what is the reward? And he says, "I, I, I'm, I'm willing, will, willing to, to offer uh, f five, w five welter coins for um, uh, ex uh, successful expedition, and uh, an, an additional uh, uh, arch coin per uh, uh, book, if if any do in fact exist." Hmm. That is a good price. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm glad, glad, glad you think a thought, the thought so. Hmm. Well, I, I believe I'm game, brother. <laughs> I look at him with a big smile. And I was like, I was never gonna not go. Byron, bring, bring the map, map, please. And Byron leaves for a short time and returns with a. Uh, what appears to be an iron an iron cylinder, and you can you can tell it's very heavy just by the way he's walking, and he sets it on the table, uh, or rather on the counter behind the table, and 
pulls open the top and pulls out a, a, a scroll that, if you guys can see me, it looks just like that with a, with a black ribbon. Okay. okay. And then he, he, un, he un, undoes it and rolls it out, and you can see this. And if it, and roll 20 in the handouts, I'm going to load up a handout that is the map. Can you guys see that? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's kind of, you can see where it's cut off in the middle. Just use your imagination. It's not so hard to, to tell. But the, you can tell that he's marked with the red ink on the right side. Right? Yes, mm-hmm. I can see it. All right. But Thistleboro's Manor is in the is south from that, in that, um, in kind of the center. You can see the Black Forest of Mortimer down here on the bottom, uh, the flag which indicates the orc territory, and then the flag on the right side is the Gilvag stronghold where the hill dwarfs reside. And then the in the kind of right side, I assume we'll put this map if anybody needs to see it, Somewhere, um, the Valley of the Thousand Statues, where the basilisks reside, and so you can see it's it's right there next to the next to the red mark. Okay, and you said we're south of the red mark at the moment. Right now, uh, if you follow the road to the uh, if you follow the road to the left and keep going, when you get down uh, before you get to the river, okay. there's kind of a really small square with a bunch of trees, and that's Thistleboro's Manor. Okay. I'm just saving this image real quick. Mm-hmm. Is the red area where the the tower is said to be? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, to the, the 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 far left southern corner, where that little red or the, where that green dice is, is where Big Cove is. It's in the very far corner. Oh right. Oh, I see. Yeah, no, I get it now. Excellent. How is the how is the map divided? Because there seems to be like an odd crease in the middle. Yeah, no, I, I had to do it in two different pictures and put them together. Um, mm-hmm. the, the the main road that goes along is is correct and it leads into the other picture, but I couldn't get the river to line up. But it's just a, the river continues like that. Oh, okay. So it's pretty close. Um, but however, it seems to be the distance may be a little uh, confused on this map. Whoever made this map. You can see it is signed uh, by by the name. You're not quite sure, um, but the uh, it took you a day and change to get to Thistleboro's Manor, and then um, that was just taking our time, right? We weren't rushing or anything like that. Yeah, I'm, perhaps if that's what you say. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. And he says, um, uh, "I've uh, I've I've mar- marked where the path, path, pathway was found." Uh, the the map is clear. I've I've, I've also um, had uh, for the the vegetable men erect a, a sign, which says you know danger, do not enter, and uh, has some some iconography. I like smile at this, and I lean back, and I'm like, hmm, danger, huh? If 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 that, if that's no if that's all right with with, with you. Perfectly fine with me. I just I just quietly continue to sip the wine, kind of staring ahead, staring at the map. Mm-hmm. If 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 required, you may you may may stay here the 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 rest of t- today and and leave in in, in the morning. Uh, if you'll ex- excuse me though, I I believe a, a nap is is in order. Mm, sounds good. Nap. Uh, I like um. Uh. <clears throat> Say, uh, if we were to take off at the moment, uh, get a head start on this, uh, would you be able to uh, provision us with some uh, missing, uh, missing things that we have from our inventory? Uh, we, only, we only had enough food for the small trip to make it here, along with, uh, I think we need... Uh, uh, well, well in, in fact, the way... The way um, M- M- Murray told it is it it only took um, it took s- s- seven hours to to get to, uh, to that point. So uh, I'm not sure you 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 will need any. Oh, any... I, li- I like look at the map and I like put my fingers out like this and I'm like just sort of like one, two, three, four. and I like I sort of scratch my head and I'm like huh, okay. <laughs> and I was just sort of looking at the map and I'm just like uh-huh. I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, in that case, I don't, don't think we have any problems leaving at the moment. Oh, uh, but please, if you if you'd like some of the uh, the, the the cheese, <laughs> uh, 
Please, I'll, I'll, I'll have, I'll, I'll wrap it up. Yes, a, uh, a nice square of the cheese and perhaps a bottle of the wine for the road? Yeah, yeah, okay, and, and Byron will fetch that for you then. I'd, like, give a finger gun to, like, uh, to, to Oro and, like, yeah. Give, give him the finger pistols. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, what happens next? Uh, uh, Boswell will shuffle down off this uh, human-sized chair and shuffle his way back to the study where he will, uh, you know, kind of wave at you as he closes the door and, and goes inside. Closes it. I like, uh, it's like, all right, uh, I guess we roll up this map then. Okay. And we roll it up and put it in inside the tube. And you said the tube was heavy, right? Well, yeah, you may not want to take the tube. It is It is made of iron. It is oh, overly heavy. Okay. Can we, like, uh, mm. what? I'm, I'm not familiar with maps of these older types, but uh, I assume that parchment and whatnot is sort of expensive. So how would I feel about creasing it? Um, well, you saw that he has many, he has much parchment in there, so, I okay. mean, um, not only that, but he'd also had many maps. Um, this may be the most, uh, current map he has, though, 361, that's about, uh, 38 years old. Okay. Uh, so, I mean, I don't know, how do you feel about creasing it? Yeah, how would your character feel? Would he even care? Uh, well, he's starting, he's starting to learn to read, so he's starting to appreciate, like, paper and books and, like, writing and whatnot, for the most part. So, um, he, he kind of like rolls it up and then he like, he like sort of weighs the, the tin container and he's like, um, hmm. and then, he, so he, he would just sort of like, I guess put it into his backpack, but he, he would try to keep it in like the roll as, as oh. tightly as he can. Um, but he won't, he won't like fold it or outright like sort of, you know, try to make it small or anything like that. So yep. it, it'll probably get bent in his bag, but. You know, he, he doesn't want to take... I don't want to take the giant ten with me. I feel yeah, no use for it, so... Alright. Whatever's next. Uh, Byron is still there. He's kind of waiting and seeing what you need to do. Um, uh, yes, uh... I, I look over to Byron and I say, So, this, this may have been a question for your master, but I noticed horses in the stable. He says, yes, uh, one for each of the guards, myself, and Boswell's pony, uh, Roswell. A lovely name for a pony. May, may I ask if, if, if I like give a slight you. chuckle to that? I just find it hilarious for some reason. Like, <laughs> yeah. Pause to kind of look at him for a moment. Ah, oh, don't worry. I yeah, uh, and you're a lass by the right. name of Roswell, and I, and then I just like give a slight wink to Oral again. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, sigh like an idiot. Uh, yes, uh, if it if it would be acceptable. Can we possibly borrow your two horses for the day? It would make the trip much more mm, speedy. And I kind of tap, I tap his backpack with a map, and I don't believe a parchment like this would do well outside of a container this long. Oh, uh, yes, that's uh, that's fine. I, I um, Master Thistleborough may have forgotten to, to mention as much, but yes, my my own horse and uh, and and John's uh, will be made available to you, saddled and, and all set, ready to go. They should be ready already, actually. Uh, Rick is out there right now. He should be uh, working on that. Ah, oh, lovely. Thank you. Uh, so about the cheese and the wine, um, where are we on those? <laughs> and he'll, he'll, he will go and, and fetch a kind of traveling pack, uh, nice. uh, maybe a, a pound of the cheese. Um, okay. And uh, a bottle of the wine, and so... Uh, yeah, you can just put that in your inventory or whoever wants to hold on to that. I like, I like, I clasp my hand on Oral's shoulder and I give him like a shake and like, yeah, this could work. <laughs> this could work. <laughs> and I like, go out and, then I, and I meet the horse there. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Okay, so yeah, uh, so this, you see this, uh, so, uh, well, well, Firstly, do you uh, so you take the you take the cheese and the wine, and then yeah. uh, Byron will see you out to the door. How much is the how much does the wine weigh, mind you? Um, bottle of wine. Let's see how much would that weigh. Probably in neighborhood. A pound two or three, yeah, two pounds, two pounds. Okay. All right, and one pound of cheese. Yes, okay, and so Byron will watch you walk walk you out if you're ready to go. Are you ready to go? Yes. We are ready to Nothing go. more to do here. <clears throat> no problem. Yes. Uh, so yeah, when so Byron leads you outside. Uh, 
he kind of uh, stands on the porch and watches you go over to the stables. Uh, and so you see this, uh, uh, he's shirtless, he's got these kind of uh, dark orange pants, breeches. Um, and when you get closer, you see this, he's, he's about 40, very, very tan, very sunbaked, like he's been working. Um, he's got cornrows. And, okay. and you see that he has a, he doesn't have a beard, uh, but he's got a, what appear to be scars on his chest and on his back. Um, and uh, he, he, he sees you, but makes no move to speak to you or anything. And he, he, there are two horses that are uh, kind of tied to a hitching post that's next to the stable. And the mm -hmm. horses themselves are uh, John's, uh, Bob, yeah, say, so a kind of a, a, a brown horse with kind of white mane and tail. And then a, um, a a kind of silver colored horse. How big is the brown one? Is it bigger than the white one, or the silver one? Um, they're on they're on the same size. I walk for the silver one. Kind of put my hand up on. on have you ever have you ever been around horses? Or. Yep. Okay, so I kind of walk up and I put my hand on the the uh, lower shoulder neck area of the horse. Uh huh. Kind of look over at the guy with the brown shorts and say, uh, what are their names? And he says, well, uh, always he kind of perks up at that and he says, well, uh, be careful. Uh, uh, what, which one are you looking at, the silver, silver one? Mm-hmm. Okay. And he says, uh, watch out. Argo likes to step on people's feet. Kind of take a step back. Yep. Glance down. So that's Argo. And then, uh, and then he kind of looks at the other one. And uh, Daybreak likes to chew, though, so <laughs> uh, take your pick. Oh, I'm pretty fast on my feet. I what was the off. what was the brown horse's name? Sorry, I didn't catch that. Chestnut. Chestnut. Is it? I woke up to the old uh, to Chestnut. Okay, now you like to bite, huh? Yeah, I can get down with that. Uh, uh, the man <laughs> looks at you strangely. No, I mean, uh, yeah. <clears throat> uh, at least he won't step I'm on just... my feet. <laughs> and then I just like sort of. Pat the dust off the horse, and was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess I mount up. He says, uh, he doesn't say anything to that, and he so he goes into the stables. He doesn't seem like he wants to help you or anything, talk to you or anything like that. Uh, so I've never ridden a horse in my life. Uh, I have in real life, but not not um, not Walzer. So, um, is there anything we need to do proficiency wise in order to like? not fall off the horse or like be able uh, the, to ride the horse the way uh you know you may have you probably have ridden a horse maybe maybe once uh and uh you, you guys can basically ride horses you can't gallop or anything but you can ride horses without falling off i mean you you, you can you can you can go at a trot faster than to, you can walk to be fair you did work as a blacksmith a lot of what you were doing was probably horseshoes yeah exactly so I, yep. you're probably more familiar with horses than you gave yourself credit for. Okay. All right. Like, I don't know if you know, but when you, like, blacksmiths don't just make the horseshoes. You're actually going to walk over, pick up the horses. I oh, know, yeah. Between your Nail legs. it on, yeah. All that sort of stuff. So That's you're fine. Pro you're prob you would probably be better at dealing with horses than I would, honestly. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> all right. So I, I mount the horse. Um, but, uh, okay. yep. I, I, I sort of I sort of sit in the saddle and I'm kind of just like <clears throat> like trying to get comfortable and I'm just like every time I do this it feels unnatural eh? and I sort of like uh, and then I, I look down at the horse and I'm like uh, <clears throat> uh, giddy up and I sort of like <laughs> sort of like wiggle back and forth a little bit and I'm just like huh <laughs> and well uh, it, it 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 looks like uh, it looks like he's trying to go somewhere but he's still tied up. I look down at the fence. I'm like, oh, of course. <laughs> I like dismount the horse, and I like, I like take the take the rein off the off the hitching pole, and then I, uh, while he's uh, while he's down, I'm gonna kind of point over at mine. And, Do you mind, brother? Uh, oh, of course. And uh, I sort of let go of the reins of the other horse, and I walk over to his, and I unhitch his, and then I throw the the uh, the reins up to him, and then I walk back to uh, to the old chestnut here, and uh, oh, just, just a little, just try to take a nibble. 
I, I, I was sort of like, I sort of like uh, dodge out of the way, and I'm like, whoa, you're a little feisty bugger, aren't you? And then I like, uh, I try and mount him again. All right. Yep. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm going to role play uh, Walza as not. Like, he knows about horses and stuff, but he doesn't like riding them. He's never been good at riding them, so... Okay. And so he, he struggles to get on, and, like, the saddle sort of slips to the side, and he kind of, like, shimmies it back up on the other side of the, uh, of the horse, and he's sitting there, and he's like, yep. <coughs> uh, <clears throat> uh, ready to go, <laughs> Oral? Yes, sure. Yeah, uh, okay, okay. We, we, gotta head, we, we, we gotta head down the road northeast from here. So uh oh af- after you uh, meet on brave uh, boy. Okay, so I, I like I like sort of kick the horse a little bit and then I'm just like ah oh, shit. <laughs> I keep, I keep walking and I'm like ah. <laughs> yep. yep, so yeah and uh then we just we, we slowly make our way down the road and I'm not I'm I'm sitting there and he, like chestnut is sort of trotting most of the way and I'm just kind of like bobbing up and down I was like I don't understand how people can ride saddles for so long. My crotch really hurts. Zero, zero <laughs> riding etiquette. <just laughs> yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, Oral follows up very, very dignified. Yep. And, uh... uh so, oh, yeah, the, uh, so the day, so today, this day, started off, uh, fairly chilly, and, uh, it is, it is late summer, and, uh, but we're in the, in the hilllands, and so it's actually, the temperature has risen to a, to a comfortable, not cold, not hot kind of thing. Mm. And uh, you guys have? Do you guys have long sleeves? Uh, well, when we actually bought the clothing, I just went for uh, yeah. middle wear sure class attire. So, but I mean, I, are, they, are they pulled up or anything? Maybe, you might want to, you may maybe roll them up just in case. Yeah, uh, the, right. the clouds are looking a bit dark. Hmm. So is is it nighttime now? Like what time of day is it? Oh, it's uh, right just after lunchtime. Oh, okay, so it's. Like, are do we feel chilly though? Do we feel cold or? No, um, no, you're quite comfortable. Okay. Well, I'm I'm starting to get more comfortable on the saddle, but I wouldn't say I'm totally comfortable. And yeah, uh, a gust of wind comes by and you nearly fall off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not so much a gust of wind. It's kind of like pushes me sideways on the saddle, like almost like the saddle isn't like properly fastened on the. Or maybe uh, when I got onto the horse, it like loosened the buckle a little bit or whatever something. and. Something gave. Yeah. Yep. All right. So there are. Yeah. There. The. There appear to be darker clouds to the to the south, but that's not where you're going. Um. But there there are clouds in the sky. Many clouds, in fact. Uh, not not particularly sunny day. Um. So we're gonna cut the time in half. It takes only. It would only. It's only going to take about three and a half hours to get to the. Spot. Um, however, the first hour goes by uh, walking. Are you guys walking side by side, single file? How big is the road? Um, imagine two two lanes of, of, of modern road. I guess we're side by side then. Don't okay. see any yeah. problem with that. Whenever something horrible isn't happening with the horses, with the horse for. I'd imagine that uh, Chestnut would be attempting to bite uh, Argalox a lot. No, not really. No? Okay. Only humans then. Just, Got it. Yeah. So the uh, yeah, okay um, about an uh, about an hour goes by um, and so you guys are walking side by side. I need um, both. I want both of you guys to actually. I want Walter to make a trouble sense check. All right, that is just uh, so one d twenty. Your trouble sense is seven, so seven or less succeeds. Okay. Don't screw us. <laughs> Good job. I'm right, too busy. So I'm too busy trying to ride the horse. Like I'm concentrating really hard on this. I think so. And riding the horse. Uh, so. so you guys are walking side by side. The the road is kind of meandering around hills and such. And so you actually walk, get a little bit uh, outside of this large hill before you see that there's a trio of humanoids about a hundred feet down road, and not only three humanoids but three uh, horses as well. And uh, so you can get a little bit closer to figure out. It doesn't look like they've noticed you just yet, but you know you got about a moment to react. All right. So I, I, I turn to Oral and I say, "Oh, it looks like the road is busy today," and I keep trotting along. Uh, you see that they're not uh, walking, but they're those three are standing off to the side. The three horses are on the other side of the road, tied to a tree. And they appear to be uh, standing. 
I kind of, I kind of pull up and call to uh, call to Walzer to to just slow his roll for a second. Mm, what's up, brother? Does none of that does that not strike you as strange? Just random. Uh, why would it? I I don't see any problem with people being on the side of the road. <laughs> Uh, well, why are they here? Like, can we see them at all from here? Or? About a hundred feet. Yeah, you can get it. You can get. Uh, you can see that they are. That's thirty yards, isn't it? Right. Uh, about thirty-three yards. Yeah. Okay, so. Thirty-three meters, because I know I know Dave's. Uh, oh, right. That's yeah. fine. Uh, yeah, you you can see them fairly well, as well as they could see you if they were looking this way. It seems like they're talking amongst one another. Um, you, you can see that they're, it looks like they're eating something, like you see them moving both hands to their, to their hands and kind of moving their head around and then discarding something on the ground. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. turn back to Do they all... have any weapons? Or... Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, you see that their skin is actually of a gray complexion, um, a bit odd. You see that uh, one of them does have what appears to be a rather large great sword on his back. Uh, I turned so would to, I, would I, turn... I know that they could be elves or... Uh, looks like uh, could be orcs, in fact. Oh, okay. Mm. I would have. I wouldn't have had any dealing with orcs up to this point, would I? Maybe a half orc or two, but no, not really. Uh, professional wise, I just would have been building armor for them or whatever at that point. Uh, orcs are are very proud, and they're actually not bad smiths themselves, and so they tend to smith their own stuff. Okay. All right. Well, I guess I I, I turn back to Arl, and I'm like, aren't you a little paranoid there, brother? I mean, we're not the only people on the planet. And I like turn back and I sort of start That's like hobbling, <laughs> just hobbling and down that the road. That's the problem. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So what happens? You continue along? Or yeah, I just, I just, I I disregard. Continue along. Yeah. So are, uh, are we? Are we aware that like are all orcs in a sense of like war? Or, there's no war going on with orcs in per se, are there? No, uh, they do control the hill country, and so if you were to travel. So far in, so far into the hill country, into their territory, uh, you know, who knows what kind of work you come across? But there's, there's chaotic orcs. There's, you know, there's they're just orcs. people. They're they're just yeah. other people. Yeah. Okay. Um, and in fact, as you continue along the road in between these three orcs and their three horses, you see that they're they are they're wearing leather vests that appear to have small animal skulls on them, fastened to them. Uh, they don't appear to be armored in anything more than that. Otherwise, they're bare-chested and wearing, like, uh, skin breeches and kind of furred shoes. Um, one of them has the great sword on his back. And there are two now, the other two. One of them is very fat. One of them is very muscular. They uh, appear to be uh, arm wrestling over a stump, a tree, a tree stump. And um, the one with the great sword who's watching them, uh, he saw you a little bit of ways ago, and he's been eyeballing you this whole time as you're walking by. And uh, he puts uh, his left arm up, and he kind of he's kind of you know touching his great sword, like you know daring you to try something. I like as, I, uh, so I lightly just wave. Okay, so I'm I'm pretty much making my way up to him, disregarding whatever oral suspicions orals had, because you know um, I don't find them to be suspicious at all. So I, I walk right up to them, and I'm like, Ah, hail! We're just passing yeah, through. The other two have stood up. Uh, <laughs> I, I like I just sort of just sort of nod and say a greeting to them and I just sort of keep walking down the road on my horse. I look back at Arl and I'm like, uh, are you coming, brother? Yeah, I suppose. You, uh, uh... you hear one of them, you're not sure which one, say something to you. Do either of you speak Orpish? I don't believe you do. I don't think I have any other languages other than the ones that I already speak. Uh, you, you speak Bazicrack, I have that on my sheet. Yeah, I speak Bazicrack and um, Beach, Crestian. Crestian, which is the common, yeah. yeah. And uh, Thieves can't. Yeah, I know, yeah, yeah, I see that too. Um, so yeah, one of them that says something to you sounds very guttural and, and from the throat um, to you. Well, I guess guttural from the, from the gut. Um, right. And uh, he calls something to you and then uh, do, you, do you look back or you just keep face forward. I, I, look, I look back I, at... I look uh, back, but I look questioned like... I kind of shrug like I don't understand what you're saying. Okay. I, I motion to my ear, or my lips, and I... Uh, could you paint a better picture for us a little bit here? How far ahead of Oral am I? How far ahead do you want to be? 
Well, I, I imagine that he stopped and I just turned around and disregarded him and kept walking. 